Getting started with basic electronics is easier than you might think. This video aims to demystify the basics of electronics so that anyone with an interest in building circuits can hit the ground running. This is a quick overview of practical electronics, and it is not the goal to delve deeply into the science of electrical engineering. However, if you are interested in learning more about the science of basic electronics, this channel is a good place to start your search. By the end of this video, anyone interested in learning basic electronics should be able to read a schematic and build a circuit using standard electronic components. There are two types of electrical signals, alternating current, AC, and direct current, DC. With DC, electricity flows in one direction between power and ground. In this arrangement, there is always a positive source of voltage and a ground source of voltage. With AC, the direction of electricity flow throughout the circuit is constantly reversing. The rate of reversal is measured in hertz, which is the number of reversals per second. For instance, when they say that the U.S. power supply is 60 Hz, it means that it is reversing 120 times per second. Electricity is typically defined as having a voltage and a current rating. Voltage is rated in volts, and current is rated in amps. For instance, a brand new 9V battery would have a voltage of 9V and a current of around 500 mA. Most basic electronic circuits use DC electricity. As such, all further discussion of electricity will revolve around DC electricity. A circuit is a complete and closed path through which electric current can flow. In other words, a closed circuit would allow the flow of electricity between power and ground. An open circuit would break the flow of electricity between power and ground. Anything that is part of this closed system and allows electricity to flow between power and ground is considered to be part of the circuit. There are two different ways in which you can wire things together, series and parallel. In the circuits on the left, the lamps are connected in series with the battery. In series connected circuits, the same current flows through all loads. In the circuits on the right, the lamps are connected in parallel with the battery. In parallel circuits, all loads have the same voltage. As the name implies, resistors add resistance to the circuit and reduce the flow of electrical current. It is represented in a circuit diagram as a pointy squiggle with a value next to it. The different markings on the resistor represent different values of resistance. These values are measured in ohms. Resistors also come with different wattage ratings. For most low voltage DC circuits, one quarter what resistors should be suitable. You read the values from left to right towards the gold band. The first two colors represent the resistor value, the third represents the multiplier, and the fourth represents the tolerance or precision of the component. You can tell the value of each color by looking at a resistor color value chart. Values of ohms over a million are represented using the letter M. For instance, 1.000.000 omega would become 1 m omega. Any resistor of over 1000 ohms is typically shorted using the letter K. For instance, 1.000 would be 1K omega, 3.900 ohms would translate to 3.9K omega, and 470.000 ohms would become 470K omega. A capacitor is an electrical component used to store and discharge electricity into a circuit when there is a drop in electrical energy. It can be compared to a water storage tank that releases water during a drought to ensure a steady flow. Capacitors are measured in farads, with values typically expressed in picofarads, PF, nanofarads, NF, and microfarads, UF. 
These units are interchangeable, and a conversion chart can be useful. Electrolytic capacitors are polarized, meaning one pin must be connected to the ground side of the circuit, while the other pin must be connected to power. The capacitor's value is written on it, typically in UF. Diodes are polarized components that allow electrical current to pass through them in only one direction, preventing electricity from flowing in the wrong direction in a circuit. They are represented in a schematic as a line with a triangle pointing at it, with the line connected to ground and the bottom of the triangle connected to power. It is important to keep in mind that passing through a diode requires energy, resulting in a voltage drop of about 0.7 V which is significant when discussing special forms of diodes like LEDs. Transistors are components that amplify a small electrical current at their base pin, allowing a much larger current to pass between their collector and emitter pins. The amount of current passing between these pins is proportional to the voltage being applied at the base pin. There are two basic types of transistors, NPN and PNP. NPN transistors allow electricity to pass from the collector pin to the emitter pin and are represented in a schematic with a line for a base, a diagonal line connecting to the base, and a diagonal arrow pointing away from the base. PNP transistors allow electricity to pass from the emitter pin to the collector pin and are represented in a schematic with a line for a base a diagonal line connecting to the base, and a diagonal arrow pointing towards the base. The transistor's part number is printed on it, and datasheets can be looked up online to learn about its pin layouts and specific properties, including its voltage and current rating. An integrated circuit, IC, is a specialized circuit that has been miniaturized and fit onto a small chip, with each pin of the chip connecting to a point within the circuit. These circuits typically consist of components such as transistors, resistors, and diodes. Integrated circuits come in a variety of shapes and sizes and can be learned about by looking up their datasheets. The datasheet provides information on each pin's functionality, as well as the voltage and current ratings of the chip and individual pins. As a beginner, through hole mounting, THT, chips will be the main type of IC used, while surface mount soldered, SMD, chips are more advanced. The round notch on one edge of the IC chip indicates the top of the chip, with pin 1 being the pin to the top left of the chip. Pins are read sequentially down one side until reaching the bottom, then across to the opposite side and then sequentially back up to the top. Potentiometers are devices used in circuits to change the resistance, and they are considered variable resistors. They are controlled through a knob or slider that is turned or pushed to modify the resistance in a circuit. Examples of potentiometers include the volume knob on a stereo and the sliding light dimmer. They are measured in ohms and their value rating is indicated directly on them, rather than through color bands. Potentiometers have three pins, which create a voltage divider, essentially two resistors in series. LEDs are light-emitting diodes and are a type of diode that lights up when electricity passes through it. They are polarized and only intended to allow electricity to pass through in one direction. LEDs show up in schematics as a diode symbol with lightning bolts to indicate that it is a glowing diode. They have two indicators to show the direction of electricity, a longer positive lead, anode, and a shorter ground lead, cathode. The other indicator is a flat notch on the side of the LED to indicate the positive anode lead. LEDs create a voltage drop in the circuit, but typically do not add much resistance, and a resistor in series is required to prevent the circuit from shorting. Wiring LEDs in series will result in a voltage drop, and eventually, 
there may not be enough power left to keep them lit. It is best to light up multiple LEDs by wiring them in parallel, but all the LEDs should have the same power rating. A switch is a mechanical device that creates a break in a circuit. When the switch is activated, it either opens or closes the circuit, depending on the type of switch. Normally open switches close the circuit when activated, and normally closed switches open the circuit when activated. A battery is a container that converts chemical energy into electricity. By placing batteries in series, the voltage of each battery is added consecutively, while the current remains the same. Placing batteries in parallel keeps the voltage the same, but the amount of current available doubles. Breadboards are special boards for prototyping electronics. They have a grid of holes that are split into electrically continuous rows. In the center, there are two columns of rows that are side by side, allowing an integrated circuit to be inserted and connected to each pin of the circuit. Breadboards allow for circuit building without having to solder or twist wires together. There are two continuous bus lines on each edge of the breadboard, one for power and the other for ground. By plugging power and ground into these buses, they can be accessed from anywhere on the breadboard. Jumper cables are suitable wires for connecting things together on a breadboard. The schematic shows that the 330 ohms resistor, LED, and switch are all connected in series with the 9V battery. When the circuit is built, the LED can be turned on and off with the switch. The graphical resistance calculator can be used to look up the color code for a 330 ohms resistor. That's it for today's lesson on basic electronics. I hope this overview helped demystify the basics of electronics for you and has given you a good foundation for your future learning. If you're interested in learning more about the science of basic electronics, this channel is a great place to start.